Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Has the U.S. been planning nuclear war? And, you know, I didn't know whether or not to name it that or to possibly title it, has the Clinton administration been planning nuclear war? In fact, for the last 20 years. You know, they say... Or, or I should say, I've seen this many times, they talk about in movies are hidden the agenda, political messages or whatever you might call it there, where they talk about uh, things that the government is planning on doing, but they kind of let you know, or maybe I, really not the government, but the elite that is. Uh, and recently we saw that uh, Donald Trump, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Newt Gingrich that stated about uh, Donald Trump that the reason why everyone hates him is he's not part of the secret society, uh, that he's not joined the elite group there. Uh, but he did use the word secret society, uh, and this is why so many people are against Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, I'd realize that Donald Trump's got some pretty extreme uh, ideas, but then again, he's probably got better ideas than most of the candidates out there because Hillary Clinton is clearly nothing but an establishment part of the elite society, the secret societies and everything else, and will go right along with whatever the plan is that they want to do. Uh, Ted Cruz, on the other hand, he's a good old boy, seems to be down to earth, uh, wants to, you know, type, type of man that would have prayer back in school. Let me put it like that about Ted Cruz. He would, to me, he would be the favored candidate in that regards there. But uh, I think as a good friend of mine said, Brother John, he made the comment in, a, in an email he sent me, he says, God will spare Ted Cruz uh, of having to be in this particular election there. And uh, so, good point. I do agree with Brother John there. But I uncovered a very startling article uh, that I found in Korean news uh, just uh, today, in fact. Uh, and this article goes back and talks about something that the Clinton administration was working on right after his inauguration uh, dealing with North Korea. So let's take a look at some of the things that I found. I've actually a couple of different articles, one from Korean uh, language news source. It's very difficult to translate it even with Google Translate because it's, it really is hard to get that language to iron out, but I believe I got that ironed out fairly well. And also uh, an inside article on the Russian media as well, and then some on regular media too. This was on the uh, Korean newspaper uh, peacemaking.kr and I will actually give you the link inside the description on this video so you can go see this for yourself. It was titled, U.S., North Korea, and Nuclear War Planning. That's exactly, I'm telling you, just like it is. And I want to share with you several things. I've got several pages here of this uh, article laid out here for you to see what was really going on. And as I said, is it something that not only was it going on then, was it a, a plan for an ultimatum in the future regardless? Watch what's stated in this article in the Korean newspaper, peacemaking.kr. It was done here on March the 6th of 2016. Uh, it says, in April 1994, an internal report published by the United States Congress, 1994 Korean Crisis. All right. Now, keep in mind now, I think it was around October when Bill Clinton signed the, the non-proliferation pact with uh, the Korean Peninsula, uh, with North Korea. But let me just, uh, I don't have the, maybe the, not the right words on that. Uh, and by the way, real quick, uh, before I go on, for a correction yesterday, when we had posted the article about that I had up there from the uh, Russian source there, that newspaper from yesterday, it was December 2015. That was my typographical era in that. I apologize for that. It was not 2016 December, but December 2015. So yes, the article is authentic uh, and, and very reliable uh, news source uh, from Russia there. Anyway, it says here, political and military terrain balance and alternatives has stated this. It, regarding the North Korean nuclear issue, will go to the extreme situation, seriously consider the use of nuclear weapons. All right, let's, let's go back and read this whole thing again. In April of 1994, an internal report published by the United States Congress, 1994 Korean crisis, 
political and military terrain balance and alternatives, has stated this. It, regarding the North Korean nuclear crisis, will go to extreme situations seriously consider the use of nuclear weapons. All right, now, it goes on to stay, state, but the first use of nuclear weapons since 1945 will have very serious implications for both political and, and psychological. World public opinion will blame the United States as an outlaw and even with less international influence of the United States. Uh, that was Herald, April 10, 1994. Such a report by the U.S. Congress suggests the two following first. It is a point that you want to seriously consider the U.S. to use nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. So if you're following thus far what the article is talking about, the United States was looking at using a nuclear bomb on North Korea. All right, watch what it states here. The United States does not use nuclear weapons, uh, excuse me. Second, the United States does not use nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula due to the fact that not because of violation of international treaties and agreements on stabilization, Korea's use of nuclear weapons was concerned about international criticism and reduce impact. Now, from the way I can see in this article being translated here, this is clearly stating the United States, they were not worried about breaking international treaties and agreements on stabilization, but the use of the weapon was concerned about the international criticism and to reduce the impact of what that criticism would do to the U.S. if they did use it. All right, watch what else it says in here. 1993 report from the U.S. Department of Defense like the bottom-up reviews forces for a new era, contains a scenario, all right? This is U.S. Department of Defense, the Hawks. In the North, since the Gulf War, the United States has hinged into a concrete in, uh, enemy. This report has departed from the scenario that the United States could win, even pay for two wars at the same time in the Middle East and on the Korean Peninsula. This is, I mean, I realize that at that time, we were coming, uh, you know, coming out of the Gulf War scenario, which is still the Middle East and the Korea Peninsula at the same time. There was the, the big concern what was going on there as well. But uh, the strange thing is we're still in the Middle East. We have a major crisis of war in, in Syria. Uh, as well, Iraq is still being influenced in this war as well. And North Korea now, unlike they had not, back during the Clinton administration, now North Korea has nuclear weapons, supposedly up to 16 warheads, all right? Now, Clinton is mentioned in this article as well as John McCain. I didn't bring these two up here, but they quote uh, John McCain. They speak about Clinton at the time during this. But let's go back and look at this one more time to catch the whole scope of this. April of 1994, an internal report published by the United States Congress, 1994 Korean Crisis, Political and Military Terrain Balance and Alternatives, has stated this. It will go to the extreme situation, seriously consider the use of nuclear weapons. Okay, now they're saying that's regarding uh, North Korea, the nuclear issue with North Korea. Now, I'm assuming in this statement here, they're speaking about North Korea. But the strange thing was, is when it says here, but the first use of nuclear weapons since 1945 will have a very serious implications for both political and psychological world public opinion. The, uh, they will blame the United States as an outlaw and even with less international influence of the United States, such a report by the U.S. Congress suggests the two following first. It is a point that you want to seriously consider the U.S. to use nuclear weapons on the, on the Korean Peninsula. So in this part of the article here, it is very evident that the article is referring to the United States was going to be the ones to use the nuclear weapons because one, they stated in here, it'd be the first time since 1945 going back to, uh, to Japan when the nuclear uh, atomic bomb was used there. And then also, as they state in here, 
uh, that they would ser ser uh, that uh, it is a point that you want to seriously consider the U.S. to use nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. Second, the United States does not use nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula due to the fact that not because of the violation of international treaties and agreements on stabilization, but it should say the word but, but Koreans' use of nuclear weapons was considered about international criticism and reduced impact. Now, again, I, I do not speak Korean. No one in our family does, so I cannot verify for a fact the, the wording in this article, but it seems clear, especially by this part here, that it is implying that the U.S. was considering the option of using a nuclear bomb on those Koreas. All right, now, I'm going to, you know, here was the other thing, too, and I don't have this up on here for you, but in one section there, it talked about how many people would be affected if they did use a nuclear weapon there. And they were talking about uh, that a million people would be killed instantly from it, and up to 10 million would be uh, adversely affected by it, and that it would even affect people in China because of being so close to this area. So this is of grave concern, very grave concerns, friends, that the United States... Uh, looking at doing this, I mean, it's the same thing as, as Russia. Russia is saying right now that if they're put in, the, uh, basically, if, if Vladimir Putin is put into a situation he thinks he can't win, he's going to use nuclear weapons. Well, it seems that the United States was looking at the exact same thing with North Korea. Uh, I guess it was easier just to go in there and use a nuke on North Korea than it was to uh, uh, go in there with the conventional forces. And, of course, we can still see some of that same uh, mentality thought with the U.S. Of the, under the Obama administration. Of course, Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State at one point there. Uh, and uh, because we see that uh, Obama had nuclear B-52 bombers flying over North Korea at low altitude so the Koreans could see that the U.S. meant business. So there's still a real possibility. Now, the thing is, if Bill Clinton was considering seriously using nuclear weapons on North Korea, if this is truly what the article states, and you guys, you look at it. I'm, I'm gonna, it'll be loaded here in the, in, the, uh, in the subject line up here. You read the article for yourself. Uh, I will uh, put it in there for you, and uh, it'll probably be, though, in, in, in the uh, Korean. If you speak Korean, I'd love to hear back from you personally. Uh, to, to verify what this statement is in this article. Uh, if not, just take it and go to Google Translate and work on it. Translate it out. Uh, but anyway, let's move along here. Uh, I want to bring out some more points regarding this. Now, we also know that in October, a few months later, 1994, the American President Project, uh, that's where this article is found on, uh, remarks on the nuclear agreement with North Korea. Good afternoon. I am pleased that uh, the United States and North Korea yesterday reached on the text of a framework document on North Korea's nuclear program. This agreement will help to achieve a long-standing and vital American objective, an end to the threat of nuclear proliferation on the Korean Peninsula. Okay, now, uh, another thing that comes to mind is I looked at the situation of the possibility of North Korea being nuked. Now, I don't think that the United States is necessarily looking at using a nuclear weapon on North Korea unless they did very much similar to what Russia has talked about doing on Turkey, and that is using a, uh, a tactical nuclear weapon which would allow them to have uh, less radiation but a, but a tremendous impact uh, to stop uh, Kim Jong-un from, from continuing on any of his little advancements there. Uh, but anyway, uh, we got to keep in mind, too, what the Pope said here. Now, the Pope may have said this because he knows what was going on 20 years ago as well, uh, but he says that uh, this may be our last Christmas. Uh, that was on your Newswire, December 21st, 2015, where the Pope says that a crowd at St. Peter's Square, in a grim speech, the Pope said that the current chaotic state of the world marks the beginning of the end times, and this time next year, the world is likely to be unrecognizable. Uh, Francis, who previously announced the beginning of the World War III, had labeled this year's Christmas as a charade during a mass at the uh, Casa Santa Marla earlier in the month. Now, I can't help but wonder, because you've got to remember, these things are pretty much planned on what they intend to do. This is what the elite intend to do. And there is a power struggle between the elites of Russia and the elites of the West. 
when I say the West, that includes the United States and Europe, uh, NATO, their allies, etc. There is a power struggle. And is it going to come down to a, to a war between the groups? It may very well be. And the Pope knows exactly what he's instructed his military to do. So he, you know, he can very easily prophesy this and come out looking like he's a, a prophet. Uh, as many people call him the false prophet. Yeah, he is. He's definitely a false prophet as well. Uh, Russia threatens countermeasures after U.S. extends sanctions. This is on the Moscow Times. This came out two days ago, uh, March 4th of 2016. Now notice what President Putin said here. This is serious, friends, very serious. According to Moscow, it's time for Washington to realize the futility of its sanctions policy and the risk of confrontation with Russia. A confrontation, you, you know, to realize the futility of its sanctions policy and the risk of confrontation with Russia. For our part, we reserve the right to retaliate with such measures as we believe will meet Russia's interests, Foreign Minister said. On Wednesday, U.S. President Barack Obama signed a decree extending the sanctions against Russia until March 6, 2017, another full year. And yet Russia is trying to work so diligently with the United States to, to bring about peace in Syria, and, and yet the United States steadily just takes and drives that knife right into their back. Don't, don't even care. You know, I mean, you can only push your, supposedly, your ally and friend so far before he'll say he's had enough. I mean, in this case here, we would be better off with Donald Trump as the president because at least he seems to have a little bit more sense when it comes to dealing with Russia. Um, I don't know about Ted Cruz, what his thoughts are on it, but, uh, you know, anyway, I don't, I'm not interested in influencing anybody's thoughts on politics. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Um... Uh, you know, I shouldn't say it. It does matter. But the thing is, I realize the hour we're at, where we're at, and prophecy's got to fulfill itself in order for the Messiah, for the Mashiach to return. And this is what I'm looking for. It says, NATO is concerned. This, this here is Jan Stolz, uh, uh, Stoltenberg. He says, this is on NATO concerned about Russia's actions in Syria amid the ceasefire. The Moscow Times, February 29, 2016. Uh, uh, Yin said here, we are concerned about the significant Russian military buildup we have seen in Syria with the ground troops, with the naval forces in the eastern Mediterranean, and with air forces conducting airstrikes. Now, this was since the signing on the 27th, since the signing of the ceasefire uh, agreement. And within two days, Yin's is already up there staying, stating that they're Concerned about the significant Russian military buildup. Notice, ground troops and with the naval forces. Now, like we brought out yesterday in the article, in the, in the, uh, that was actually the Ukrainian news that I, that I brought that out from December of 2015. Uh, they, the the uh, Ukrainian, Poroshenko, the president there, has already made military ties with Turkey, and they're planning on getting Russia out of Crimea. And it looks like to me, some of the news we looked at today, there's been a lot of provocation from uh, some of the rebel forces to get Turkey to invade. They've intentionally, according to some media reports, they, they've intentionally been shelling Turkish side to try to provoke them into coming in to invade Syria. And of course, they're on the side. They're, they're, you know, they're on that, uh, they're on the Russian side, if I'm not mistaken. I forget which group that is there as far as technically there. But Syria backs a lot of these groups here. It's not the Kurds shelling them either. You know, so they're wanting Turkey to, to invade. And of course, I think this is where the whole war is going to begin. And as soon as a, ma if a major conflict breaks out between the United States and Russia, you can count on one thing. Kim Jong-un, or however you say his name over there, in North Korea, he's going to take and try to lob nuclear bombs to the United States. And I did read several articles on the Korean, different Korean uh, uh, websites there, and he has specifically stated, he said he's not going for South Korea. He said, I'm going for the continental United States. He said, that's where I'm going to send the missiles. That's where we're going to send the nukes. 
and uh, I believe it was Sister Lisa recently, she had posted on her news channel, uh, that's, I forget how Lisa's channel is on there, but she, she posted on her own news channel how that, um, um, that the, on the west coast of the United States, they are actually speaking, or they were doing drills on the emergency broadcasting system about the amount of time they have to get to a fallout shelter for the expectation of a nuclear attack coming from North Korea. Don't forget, North Korea did test launching a, a ballistic missile from their subs, one of their subs, and the first time it failed, the second time they were successful. Now, the United States doesn't know if they have the ability to put, the capability to put a nuclear warhead on that same ballistic missile from the sub, but no doubt they probably do. So, the ocean's big. And you never know what their, what their intentions are. Now, the United States says that, you know, they, they have never tried in real time to be able to knock out a ballistic missile. It's a very difficult thing to do. But in simulations, they've been able to do it. If they've got 16 nuclear warheads, though, um, they may try a few towards the United States. And if that doesn't work, they may drop it into South Korea. I think the reason why they're not looking to do it in South Korea is because they don't want the adverse effect there on their own land. They may even try Japan. You never know where they're going to try next. But anyway, it's, we're living in a serious time, for a very, very serious time. This is a time for being in prayer and really seeking the Lord to know your own Messiah, uh, to know Yeshua, and to be ready, you know, for the, for the judgment that's about to come upon this earth. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we'll keep you up to date on everything we possibly can. Shalom. Thank you.